Hi, welcome to the show. I'm so thrilled to announce the show is now called Unplugged with Eraldo and Darren. Yes, that's right. National TV personality and Andy Cohen's chief of staff is now officially the co-host of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, there is more. We want to welcome our viewers in the San Francisco Bay Area as the show is now airing in both Philadelphia and San Francisco. So it is great to be coast to coast, Darren. It is finally, finally. Man. We, we span we, both we did coasts. It. Yeah, we do both coasts, exactly. I'm excited. I'm so thrilled to be here with you. Oh, no, it's, it's an honor to have you. And, uh, you know, let, let's talk about something that it's been bugging me lately because, oh, no. yeah, you oh, know, no. the. Um, the social media that's going on these days. Uh, what is your What is your thought? You're such a dad. Right? I love it. <laughs> I'm right social media <laughs> thing. Social media uh, thing. What's, I mean, going, what's going, going on? You know. Listen. I mean, I grew up in a generation we didn't have cell phones in our hands when right. we were very, very young. So mm -hmm. I'm sort of the last. What feels like of the generation who like knows what it's like to not have social media. Right. But what I find now is that everyone is so siphoned in their opinions. Okay. And I feel like it's starting to separate us a little bit. You know, like right. you only read the news publications or the right. people on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram uh -huh. that you are already confirm your views. Right. Right. So a lot of people aren't actually gaining further knowledge and mm. understanding the opposition. And I feel like that's what's causing a lot of tension between yeah, a lot of I people. Yeah, I agree. Listen, I, I have kids myself. They're growing up. They're yeah. into social media a lot. And sometimes they're, they're just, just dependent on Twitter, just dependent on Instagram. Exactly. You know, and I'm like, guys, you need to broaden your... <laughs> You know, your, your, your opinion, you need to do some research because right. you can't just base it on one thing. That's just somebody's opinion, you know? And, and I mean, listen, I mean, social media brings, gives people a voice that didn't have one, right? right and so right. I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go negative on social media because I do right. think like having the news right there course, every minute makes it so feedback. much better. Correct, yes. But at the same time, it's also kind of hard to know what you should listen to and what not. So yeah. it's, it's kind of a catch-22 yeah. a little bit, yeah. Well, anyway. All right, let's go to our first guest. She is Stephanie Bennett. She is author of the book, Johnny B. Bad, the amazing behind the scenes story of the making of Chuck Berry, Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll, and the woman who lived through it. In 1987, the Taylor Hackford documentary, Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll, celebrated the genius of music legend Chuck Berry and his relationship with Rolling Stone Keith Richards. Now, 32 years after its wow. release comes the story of the making of the movie, and it's not a pretty picture. <laughs> Stephanie Bennett knows firsthand. Thank you so much for being Thank you, here, Stephanie. Stephanie. How are you? Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, congrats on the book. <laughs> yes. Thank There's you. so much to go through. Uh, what sparked you to write the book? Uh, two years ago yesterday, Chuck mm -hmm. died, Yes. and the phone rang off the hook. People were saying, and people said to me, how do you feel? I said, wow, um, I feel like, you know, we made a great film, didn't we? And they said, yeah, but do you remember this? Do you remember that? Mm. And so right. I... I thought there's maybe there's a book here, and <laughs> right. I wrote a proposal, and you know we interviewed 15 people. Um, Taylor Hackford, Helen Mirren was there through the whole thing. Wow. Uh, Keith Richards. So we, you know, we put to, I just interviewing these people in their stories. It's just amazing that in one film so much happened over so, a, a, like really a two-year period. For our viewers, tell us a little bit about Chuck Berry. You know, what What was he like? What was he, you know, tell us about the viewers a little bit. the pros and the cons. pros and the cons about, you know, working with Chuck Berry. Well, the pros are that he made great music and he influenced, and without him there would be no Beatles or Stones. Correct. Amen. Um, yes. And Roll Over Beethoven is really what launched both the Beatles and the Stones. And the Stones, correct. Yeah. And I think that was always, you know, stuck in his gut. I think it was, you know, he never was got the adulation that um, they did. Right. He got the money, but not the adulation. Right. And I think for me, it was doing the film as an, a legend. Uh -huh. And, you know, Taylor Hackford agreed to do it. He's a, it was a big feature film. Right. Universal agreed to make it. Mm -hmm. So here we are. We think we're going to make a great film about Chuck Berry. Okay. And he's going to love it, right? right. And we're going to surround him by all these people who love him. Right. Got a great musical director, Keith Richards, who <laughs> right. wanted to pay his dues, he said. Mm. And Chuck could not care less. He could not care. <laughs> I could and care. I would say to him all the time, but Chuck, Eric Clapton, you know, Linda Ballstadt, right. you know, Etta James. And he'd be like, 
give me another 25,000 if you want me to do this. Wow. And so it was all about the money. Every day before we started shooting a scene, uh -huh. he would call up, once he called a phone box on the corner, right. of the, one of the worst parts of St. Louis, mm -hmm. this phone kept ringing. And finally, Taylor Hack was said to someone, go pick up that phone. Right. And they picked it up and said, it's for you, Taylor. And so he says to Taylor, Taylor, I just want you to know, everything's good between you and me, mm. but I, I need to speak to the producer. And so I get on the phone and I'm like, Oh no. But Chuck, <laughs> but Chuck, we have a deal. No, no, we don't have a deal for, to do this. And it was to shoot at the Cosmo Club, which is where he originally started. Well, he originally started, right? So yeah. the law my lawyer and I would trot out to his home and renegotiate until one day Universal said, you know what? Let him sit down and write the contract. Right. And then, you know. Then you can agree to it. Then you or can not. agree right. to it. Right? And then <laughs> we can maybe sue him for duress at the end of the, the right. show. Right. Yes, know? right. And, and he would say things like, well, you know, Stephanie, you could make things easier. You know that. And the funny thing was, at the beginning, he said, I'm so glad you're doing this film because women have been prejudiced against, they've had a hard time making it in the world, so I'm really glad my producer's a woman, right? Right. But he obviously thought I was part of the deal, which, you know, hmm. and then it got around to, well, you, you mean know. You part of the deal with the, con like, like was, uh, yeah. <laughs> was it's like, more, yeah. You're, you're giving yourself a little bit more, right? Exactly. <laughs> so don't you come with the deal? I mean, I, wow. I thought that was part of the deal. What was the relationship like with between Chuck and Keith Richards? It was, it was, um, it was interesting because um, Keith had to put up with a lot. There's a famous scene where they do O'Carroll and Chuck gets up there and he's being filmed and he's got the band there, Johnny Johnson, Chuck Lavelle from the Stones. And, and he's teaching Keith to play O'Carroll. And wow. he's like, gotta get it right, gotta get it right, Keith. Wow. You know, and Keith, if it's probably the most watched part of the film on YouTube, is Keith is just glaring and we're like, is Keith gonna walk out? Is he gonna walk away from this? Is he gonna take it? Mm. And he took it. And even the night of the concert, he said, we're gonna ch switch keys. Right. And Keith said, no, Chuck, we're not. <laughs> and I mean, wow. it was always that control <laughs> thing. He thought he was in control. Right. Wow. And I think as Keith said, it was like, he opened the doors, Chuck, to us, and the whole world came in, and so he couldn't control I it. I want to get the book in, Stephanie, yeah, so hold the book Stephanie. for us real this quick. Is, but anyway, there are many, many stories. There's a story of how he drove us into a prison, right? and we got <laughs> attacked. Yeah, and I saw, oh my I God. I gotta get this book <laughs> We gotta get the book of that. Now, wow, there's <laughs> so listen, much to Listen, congratulations on the Thank book. You. All the best to you. Thanks for being here, Stephanie, and, and I really wish we could stay here all day and talk about it, but thank okay, you for being here. buy the book. Buy rock, the book, rock that's rock right. Roll. <laughs> Still to come, we're gonna give you some easy ways to eat healthy, and yes, we mean easy, just a few simple steps and you can have delicious meals for the entire family. And stay with us. We'll be right back with physician assistant Jessica DeLuise to talk healthy meal planning. Welcome back. Planning those daily meals can be quite the task. Earlier this week, Araldo met up with physician assistant Jessica DeLuise to show how you can make easy, healthy, delicious meals the whole family will love. As most of you know, Araldo is a certified fitness trainer, so he's all about eating healthy. Okay, Jess, thanks for being here. What do we have here? Okay, so when you're trying to incorporate whole food nutritious options, yes. VT Rice is a lifesaver for me in my mm -hmm. kitchen. I'm gonna share with you a little bit about this. Absolutely. It is a partially cooked rice. Okay. You pop it in the microwave for two minutes and it is perfect every time. Every single time, right? I have a hard time cooking <laughs> rice, so this has been amazing for me. Right. And it's very nutritious, right? It's whole grain, it's mm -hmm. gluten-free, it's right. non-GMO. Oh, wow. I That's wanna great. show you how I use it. Please, let's okay. go ahead and let's start so, over here. Yes, so for breakfast, 
instead of a very processed cereal, for example, right. with artificial colorings and yeah, flavoring, right. That, right. VT rice doesn't have that. Okay. So you can actually make a whole grain rice bowl for breakfast. Wow. I, I love, love that. I love that too. Yeah, so just fresh strawberries. You can even use fro frozen if you wanted to. Right. Blue, um, bananas, if you right. want to. Help me out here. Of course. Some cinnamon. Oh, yeah. Some cinnamon. I'll get all yuckies with these bananas. Some cinnamon, so that's going to balance our blood glucose, right? So a nice whole grain to fuel our morning. Chia seeds for some protein and fiber. Chia. Ch -ch 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 -chia. Love that. Those are the, that's where <laughs> that comes from, that. the same thing. <laughs> anyway, so that's an easy way to incorporate something that you, Nutrition it's a pantry. Nutrition is healthy, absolutely. Pantry staple, exactly. And then, yeah, so incorporating it, instead of a processed pasta or couscous, right. you can actually swap VT rice in it in a salad type right. situation. So this is a Mediterranean salad. It looks delicious. My God, that looks uh, great. This is a one bowl kind of recipe. You just throw all of you know your colorful ingredients, boost that antioxidant content, mm -hmm. the nutrition content, and make a rice. You can make this ahead of time. Right. Pack it for lunch, or I think all the kids even would like this for dinner. Right. Think you about can put that. all these things in there too, right? You can put all those things. Yeah. So cucumbers, red onion, kalamata, olives. So it's and it's also plant based for vegans, right? So it's plant based for vegans. Vegans, exactly. So yeah, you can swap this in. You can make stuffed peppers as a right. full meal if you wanted to right. with this rice. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, that I love it. Delicious. Mm, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thanks, being here. Thanks, Geraldo. Jessica. Okay, guys. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Geraldo and Jessica. The dishes look incredible. Plus, it's great to know that VT rice is plant-based, so you can just omit that chicken to make the salad a delicious vegan dish. For more wonderful recipes, go to VT.com. And when we return, we'll chat with an expert about what's wrong with the college admissions process that allowed the recent admissions scandal to happen. Stay with us. We are back. I am sure you're familiar with the recent college admissions scandal, which the United States Justice Department has called the biggest college admissions scandal it's ever prosecuted. The bribery scandal involved 50 college admission consultants, college athletic coaches, CEOs, and Hollywood celebrities. Basically, it was a scheme in which wealthy parents reportedly paid bribes to get their children into elite colleges. So here with us via Skype from San Francisco to discuss the scandal and what colleges can do to avoid these issues is Vanessa Didick. Vanessa is a highly respected leader in education tech. Vanessa actually started her first company, Scholar Station, at age 24. She's currently the CEO of Zimi, a mission-driven company focused on giving students a voice and providing them access to life-changing opportunities. Thank you so much for joining us, Vanessa. Really Hi, Vanessa. appreciate it. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. So right <laughs> off the bat, I got to ask you, you know, what's wrong with the college admission process that sort of caused this entire scandal to go down? Yeah, you know, I think I think it's an interesting time in college admissions. It's, the college admissions has gotten so stressful for students. And I, I think, you know, what happened with this scandal is disturbing. But I think it's indicative of just how stressful the process has become for, for students. And that's students across the board. These families had access to unusual resources, illegal resources, all sorts of things. But I would say it's probably, you know, boils down to this epidemic of just stress in the college admissions process. All right, so Vanessa, tell us about the uh, your company, Zimi. What did they do to sort of either alleviate the issue or to improve the conditions? Tell us about that. Sure, so Zimi is, is the first professional social network that Gen Z students connect on before they get to college. So students can actually learn about a college that they're interested in, they can connect with the admissions folks at that college, and they can connect with other students interested in that college as well. But perhaps the most important thing is the Zimi story, which is a profile that students create that uh, sits as a supplement to the college application. And it's a video profile, so it's a chance for students to show who they really are in the application process. And our goal is to sort of level the playing field for all students. What is something a student can do to make them seem more attractive to a college? Like, is there anything they can do, a certain step they should absolutely take? We believe the Zimi profile is part of that because it's, it allows students to tell their real story and put their life in context. So I think it's really important. So schools are looking for students who are, you know, demonstrate grit, persistence, resilience, all of these really important uh, characteristics that you would want in any friend, adult, you know, 
colleague. Uh, and so the Zini story gives students a chance to kind of put their life in context and tell their story beyond that, uh, you know, that essay or the, the SAT scores. So Vanessa, when did, when did Zini start? When did the company start? Zini started in 2014, and uh, the Zini story came out in 2015, and we've got over 250 colleges that have actually embedded the Zini story into their application process. And then in 2017, we launched an additional product that allows the students to connect with one another and to connect with those admissions folks at the schools. What is the biggest mistake a student can make when applying to school? I think falling into that, believing that false success narrative, that there's only one college out there, there's only one name that, that matters, instead of really trying to figure out which, which school is the right school for me, what's going to set me up the best for success. So does the um, does Zimi also help build a profile on the website so that colleges can look at not only you know their scholarship, their their um, education background, everything else, but they also look at videos, right? This is what Zimi is good about. Yeah, so Zimi is a video first platform, so students can actually watch videos from students on campus, but they can create these videos of themselves. They can show talents that they have. They can they can literally tell. You know, talk about themselves and tell their stories. If a student is a slam poet, for example, it looks a lot more interesting to actually watch the video of them performing than it is to just read that line item on their activity card. Do you think the recent scandal with college admissions is discouraging students and maybe even parents now? Like, how is it affecting the whole college industry, if you will? Yeah, we're seeing in, in Zini, because students are actually communicating with one another around colleges that they're interested in. And we are seeing that students are a little bit defeated. Right now is the acceptance season, and so students are logging in and they're chatting with each other about acceptance season and getting in. And I think, I think it is it is discouraging because they they do feel like you know maybe the whole system is rigged. I think it's important to remind them that this is a small subset of students, and the majority of students and the majority of admissions offices are really seriously considering each and every student and who's the best fit for them. Now, Zimi is only domestic, right? Or are they international as well? We are international. We, we have a few international schools in our platform, and we've got international students applying as well. Would, would Zimi be a good place to go if you don't even know if you want to go to college? Or is it really just for people who know they want to go to school and trying to find the right one? No, it's a great spot to go if you're not even sure, if you're still exploring, if you're trying to figure out you know, which school might be a good fit for you. Students can come into Zimi. They can they can learn about the schools that they're interested in by watching these videos that students on campus are actually creating, and they can communicate with the admissions officer. Something that you know previously was really restricted to wealthier students. That school visit is really something that only a handful of students were able to do. I didn't visit colleges when I was applying. I was only able to visit after I got in. Zimi makes it possible for students to learn about schools and communicate with those schools and with other students interested in the same school right away. Mm. Are there wow. certain things that students should be putting on the video and is there a protocol or something that you can recommend? So we have a series of prompts. We have some questions that students can answer if, if they're not sure what they want to include. I would say anything that showcases something they care about, something they're good at, something that matters to them, that really separates them and is able to say, here's who I am, here's what matters to me, here's where I'm headed, this is what I stand for. Wow, I mean, the video, the video process seems a little daunting, <laughs> but given prompts and you want to show your personality, that's so great. I wish we had Zimi around when I was applying to school. <laughs> yeah, me too. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, I learned thanks for being with us. so much, so much. <laughs> Okay, guys, we have executive chef Chris Rotondi in the studio, and he will be making one of my favorites, a roasted red pepper cream sauce. Stick around. My favorite segments. <laughs>
This looks and smells good. Hi, Chris. How are you? Thanks for being here. How are you doing? Appreciate I'm it. I'm so excited to get my hands dirty. <laughs> Let's get your today. hands Let's dirty, right? So, Sounds Chris, great. what do we have here? Tell us a little bit about what we got going on here. Um, so, we're going to be making a fresh pasta crab ravioli mm -hmm. uh, with a yes. sweet oh, roasted boy. red pepper cream sauce. Oh, that's silly. So, you got the pasta already all set up, Hold right? On, you said we're making it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to get our hands dirty, all right? Okay. What's so, the first step? Yeah. yeah, tell us. So, first thing uh, will be for the filling. Okay. Uh, Raldo, you have that. Wait, so I'm going to start getting right now, B. Yeah. Yes. Ingredients are right in front of you. You have a uh, fresh ricotta. Mm -hmm. um, we have some uh, quality lump crab meat, uh, minced shallots, minced red bell peppers, uh, some lemon juice, a little bit of Old Bay, and some fresh parsley. So Perfect. that can all just get mixed in. Okay, what am I doing? I feel like I got so, the hard task. So you, you, you have the fun <laughs> so task. I'm the newbie. Okay, so, what do so I gotta you, do? So you're gonna do the dough. So we have okay. a semolina flour, double zero flour, eggs, and olive oil. Okay. So you're just gonna roll up your sleeves and just what start. What does double zero flour mean? So double zero, um, it's basically almost like you take an all-purpose flour mm -hmm. and it gets ground again. So it's a much finer grind. You get a smoother uh, pasta, smoother okay. product out of it. Mm. All right, get busy with that. All right, I'm trying. All right, this is why I, this is why I work out. <laughs> so, Chris, so what's the difference between a fresh pasta and dry pasta? The, the biggest difference to me is flavor-wise. Okay. Uh, in fresh pasta with the eggs and olive oil in there, it's just much more flavorful than a typical dried pasta, semolina okay. and water. Oh, I see. So, almost anything's more flavorful than water. Wow. What was the first dish you ever cooked? Like, how did you get involved in chefery, if you will? <laughs> chefery, um, I love that. I've, yeah. I've been in the industry since since I was about 13, 14 years old. So, oh, wow. so I kind of just wow. came up through the ranks and worked front of house, back of house. Yeah. And you tell us about your restaurant a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it's the Skip Back Village Italian Market. Okay. Um, we're a hybrid restaurant, deli. Uh, we also do catering as well. So we kind of do a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, group. right? If I'm going there, what do I have to get? <laughs> well, any of the pastas on the menu are all made from scratch like we're going to do. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so okay. you really can't go wrong with anything like that. Wow, this looks and smells amazing, doesn't it? Oh my God, how long do I have to knead the dough for? Like how <laughs> so, long until it like... So it, it would take about five, six minutes. Okay. Uh, if it felt a little wet, then you would keep adding a little bit of flour to it until you get a nice smooth ball. Once uh, you had that, we would rest it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, and then we would have this finished product right here. All right, um, so this is all done, I believe. Okay, great. All right, so let's talk about the sauce Yeah, then. let's get to it. Okay. Uh, you so, gotta put the pasta in there, right? You gotta... Yes. Okay. So we have our pasta there. Uh -huh. so That's start... what my finished product would look like wow. if I was competent. Okay. Oh, look at that. So I'll start running it through the machine, and uh, I'll start closing the gap to make the pasta thinner and longer. Okay. Huh? Thinner, awesome. and lo thinner and longer. That's right. Okay. How thin do you want it? Like. So it's almost if like if you put it on top of a newspaper, right? Uh, you'd be able to just about read the newspaper through. Okay. So that thin then, right? Oh, yes. like basically translucent almost. Okay. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. <laughs> Now, if you don't have that machine, you can just kind of roll it out, roll it out, Absolutely. roll it out. Absolutely. It takes a little longer, but you know, I guess you get the same result, basically. Now, if I bought frozen ravioli in comparison to making it from scratch, yes. would I know? Would you know? How would I be able you, to tell? What's the biggest difference? You can definitely tell, tell the difference. Uh, egg yolks and, and olive oil, they definitely add a, a nice richness to it. Oh, excellent. So okay. now the filling that we got here, it's ready. That's going to be... And so, sit a can right there, right there, and you're going to put it in the raviolis, right? Yes. So let's go ahead and fill the raviolis in. Ooh, so I once we're all oh rolled out. <laughs> so <laughs> right? well I'm so done. Hungry. I can eat the raw dough right now. I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to eat the <laughs> eggs <laughs> on my hand. Are you kidding? Wow, look at that. How much there filling do you put in each? Uh... Um, so it might get a little, no, a little not that than... much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat whatever it is. Whatever left over, I'll eat it. Whatever left over, I'll do it. Wow, so you actually have to squeeze those in, right? One by one? Yes. Excellent. Okay, and it's like a spoonful enough in it, right? It looks like, looks about about yeah, it's about a, yeah, it's about that much, really, right? Yeah, you're probably about a tablespoon or so in there. And then once you you know layer the ravioli and make it, you drop it in boiling water and cook Correct. in a few. It'll be about four minutes. Okay. okay. There you go. There we go. Not bad. And then can you make the sauce at the same time that you're doing the ravioli? Absolutely. I mean, you're. A, I mean, you're a Superman, so you can, but I want the people at home to feel like they can. Your dough looks so much better than mine. I'm trying. Right? I'm trying. You're doing a great job, by the way. I'm trying. <laughs> so you're going to put the layer on top of there, right? Yep. So I use a little bit of egg yolk to bind everything together. Right. Okay. It's like and glue. I have that on there. And then you flatten it out, right? take our rolling pin here, and that's going to oh cut gosh. our edges out. <laughs> Get that yeah. out of our way there. Okay, great. And then you got about a minute left. I don't cut it up. It. There we go. All good. All right. Okay. 
Okay, so we get the sauce then. Yeah, tell right. us about the sauce. Tell a us about bit. the sauce of it a little bit. All right, so uh, the sauce we're going to start out with a little bit of butter. Okay. okay. And you just throw all those ingredients. Just throw all what in are you there, making? Right? A just butter first, melt it. Yep. Okay. okay. So we're just going to sweat out the garlic and shallots. Okay. okay. A little bit of those in there. All right. So we got about 45 seconds left or so. So that everything goes in there, right? So yep. basically, you're doing that. That goes in the pan. You're gonna put the raviolis in the water, correct? Yes. And then they'll like, and then this is all. Obviously, everything's gonna be combined together. Oh, nice! Look yeah. at that, all that. <laughs> and then so. tell us what the finished product. And then the finished product, guys, like. it's right there in the front. Tell us about the finished product, Chris. So it's a sweet roasted red pepper cream sauce with a crab and ricotta ravioli. Oh, wow. oh my God, that looks so that much looks better amazing. than anything amazing. we could make. Listen, Chris, this is amazing. Thank you so much thank for being you so on the show. We could talk about this all day, but thank you so much for being on the show and showing us. I'm not going to shake your You're hand. Shake your very hand. appreciative of you That's coming great. by. Okay, guys, uh, thanks to Chef Chris. This is amazing. It's time to wrap it up. And thanks again to all of our guests. And a special thank you to my new official co host, Darren Garb. We also want to give a shout out to our new set design, which looks incredible. Thanks right. to Thomas Matthews Design, located in Wayne, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. known for luxury interior design, tailored for your busy lifestyle. And remember, let's continue our conversation on social media. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I know it's like The preceding was sponsored by 